Up next, let's give a warm Elevate Daytona Beach welcome to Dr. Tom Kramer. Thank you. Hi. My name is Dr. Thomas Kramer. I'm a professor of psychology at Daytona State College. And tonight, I hope we have some fun over the next five minutes as I tell you some interesting facts about my sex education. It was a little warped. <laughs> Let me get to it. Hit it, Mike. The United States has the highest teen pregnancy rate in the industrialized world. 90% of those pregnancies are unintended and 50% happen within the first six months of the initiation of sex. What does this tell us? These kids don't know what they're doing. They need some help. Let me tell you about my sex education. It started at age four. I was in a preschool program, and every afternoon we went swimming. Now, what would happen is, because we're all four, we all changed in the same room, and me and my friend Bobby up there, we're there standing naked, getting ready to put on our swimming trunks, and this little girl comes over, she points at Bobby, and she says, you've got a yo-yo, and I don't. <laughs> I went, oh my God, she doesn't have a yo-yo. Well, first of all, I didn't even know they were called yo-yos, and, and I looked again, and, and just to double check, she still didn't have one. I, I surveyed the room, and I realized others had this dismemberment as well. I, I was confused, I was flubbed. I went home and I asked my mom, and she said, when you get older, you'll understand. I asked my dad. He said, when you get older, you'll understand. I asked my brother and sister, and they just giggle at me. It wasn't, un uh, was it about seven or eight was my next sex education where a kid in the schoolyard told us how babies were made. Oh my God, you're kidding. Can't you get cooties from doing this stuff? I mean, really? Ah, it wasn't until I was about 11 that I finally had an adult conversation about sex. Now, he was 13, so I knew he really knew what he was talking about. <laughs> yeah, and he told me that there were certain diseases you could get if you had sex with the wrong person, and the yo-yo would shrivel up and drop off. I'm going, oh my God. <laughs> but he said he knew how to protect yourself. He said, there was a safe way to have sex, and he told me it was all about the lemon. He said, if you're with a girl, you squirt the lemon on her, and if she jumps and yells, she's got it. <laughs> yeah. I made sure I had lemons on me. You know, don't go with a girl that can't pass the lemon test. That's, that's the truth. So I'm 11 years old, I'm sitting in geography class, math class, trying to figure out how these lemons are going to work in a dating scenario. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's going to happen? I even got to the point where I went out and learned how to juggle lemons just so I would have a reason to have them on me. <sighs> Boy, I thought about the situation, I might be on a date, and I would kind of trip and I'd squirt the lemon, but I'd be afraid I'd have a premature lemonade. This was getting complicated. I really needed some help. I was 12 years old. My dad comes into my room, and he says to me, do you know what you need to know? I'm 12. I knew everything. I mean, I knew the mechanics. I knew about the miracle of the lemon. What else was there? So I said to my dad, no, I'm good. He goes, OK. <laughs> Let me ask you, how many of you, raise your hand, had the dad or mom talk? Come on, raise your hand. Not that many. How many of you had formal sex education in school? Yeah, a little more. I'm surprised. I don't normally see that many. I mean, we really, we're not comfortable sometimes with what the schools are telling our kids, and we're apparently not very comfortable at all talking to our kids about it, and we've got to get over that. We know the great fear of where our kids might go to get their information. <laughs> yeah, think about this. Do you want them on the internet or e-entertainment network? What are our kids learning? Are they learning that there's such a thing as commitment? Are they learning things about caring for someone, making future plans? If we're not talking to them, somebody else is. And I behoove you to have these conversations with your kids. 
we really need to step up as parents, as a community, and I will leave you with this one thought. If you notice that your 11-year-old is carrying around a lemon, <laughs> I think it might be time to have that conversation with them. Thank you so very much.